So here we have the platform for the Armpart Windows 10 laptop. So hello, so who are you? So my name's Andrew. I work for marketing for Qualcomm. And we're showing the mobile PC demo here. And there's a big event yesterday, the, the Microsoft keynote, and it was announced that Asus, HP, Lenovo are making amazing devices with Snapdragon and Windows 10. That's right. So we're, these are the, and what we're showing here is we have uh, the, for the first time Windows 10 running on Snapdragon 835 to give people a real feel for the actual experience they can expect on those devices. So right here is just a demonstration of uh, approximately what the difference might be. Like this would be an Intel device. It's uh, nearly double the size compared to a Snapdragon 835. It's just much more optimized, more compact. Well, what we're doing is we're going for, from discrete components, what you see in our competing, in the competing platforms, to the SOC that Snapdragon has. So things like uh, the modem and GPS and, uh, and uh, well, other components in there, like a the Wi-Fi, those, those are all built into the SOC instead of being discrete components. So it takes up much less space on the PCB allowing for what we're estimating about 30% reduction in PCB size. The big advantage there is thinner, lighter devices and bigger batteries for longer battery life. So these are under construction right now being optimized in very, very thin laptops that are going to consume less power, run long on a battery. So the design that we're talking about, or the designs that we're talking about with our partners are, are the thin and light uh, fanless designs. These would be uh, two-in-ones and, and uh, convertibles, detachables, that type of device. And you're running Windows 10 right now. It's a full Windows, and you're running on a development device. This is the Snapdragon 30, uh, 835 development device, right? Right. This is it's one of our engineering platforms. We use it for demos periodically when we need to connect uh, for the uh, modem demos. But this is just one of our development platforms that we're using for this demo. And so this connection to the LTE, so you can demonstrate that this is going to be LTE, mm -hmm. gigabit LTE. Gigabit LTE, yep. So let's, let's check it out. This looks like Windows. It's real. It's Windows. It looks like Windows because it is Windows. So uh, we'll I'll go through just some of the activities here. We do, we're doing some productivity, and we're showing the ecosystem. We do some video streaming to show the connectivity. You have all these apps basically open yeah, at the same these time. Are, these are open right now. So actually. multitasking. Yep. All the UI of Windows 10 is, is fully speed up, optimized. You're still working on I mean, it's coming yep. by the end of the year, right? Yeah, yep. that's when we're expecting first launches. Uh, so this is all, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, like I say, it's simple. It's just, this is Windows on ARM, but this is regular office applications. I have all of my capabilities. There's essentially nothing here that, uh, that is different from you know, any, any office application experience. So here you're doing some of the advanced stuff that you, is possible to do in Excel, and uh, this is the x86 version of Excel. It's not an ARM optimized version. Right, right. yeah, this is, this is Win32 application running through emulation. So as I go through this, you can pay close attention and see that it's very high performance even though we're running on emulation. So this emulator has got to be pretty amazing and impressive how it's done. Like, uh, there's all kinds of optimizations uh, to not use too much processing power, but make things fast. I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of a performance hit when you're, when you're running on emulation. Um, if you want a lot of details about exactly how that emulation works, um, Microsoft re released on their Channel 9 video channel, they, they have a video that shows in, in significant detail the compile process, and they talk a lot about the emulation. So they, they demonstrate how you can recompile for Windows Universal, right? When it's right. universal, then it's fully ARM optimized. Right. When you do universal, it'll run natively on ARM, uh, so, so you don't even have to worry about that, uh, that emulation. This but, is the PowerPoint. You yeah, copy PowerPoint. from Excel to PowerPoint. Copy from Excel to PowerPoint. We can pull up multiple windows so I can bring in Word. We can copy from Word into PowerPoint. So I'm just building a presentation here just to show some of the capabilities. With Word and PowerPoint, it's exactly the same as it is with Excel. This is just Office. This is no, There's nothing special or different here. It has all the functionality that people already depend on. And we're just running it on uh, on Snapdragon. So this is uh, this is full Windows 10. It's not Windows 10 S. Correct. It's not only Universal apps. Correct. It's any right. any app. Any application. Well, any any uh, Universal or Win32 applications. Right now, the emulation, the current release of the emulation, doesn't support the Win64 uh, applications currently. currently. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I mean, most of the apps are Win32, right? Uh, right. On Windows. I mean, almost almost all applications are Win32, or they have 64-bit and 32-bit versions, and so then you just do the 32-bit version. And you can this. just download any .x and just install. 
And yeah, so actually we'll, we'll, we'll show in, in just, a, just a second here. So I'm just finishing up that productivity. I just emailed, emailed the, app, the uh, file to myself. But now let's go out uh, to the internet and we'll go find a file here. Actually, we'll just do this 7-zip here. So you so just I, download? So I'm just gonna download the 32-bit x86 application now. 7-zip and this application was created with no knowledge of, of Windows on ARM or Snapdragon and Windows collaborating. So we just download and install. It runs even the security scan like Windows yeah, would? Yeah, still runs security scan because it is Windows. So it's got all this anti-malware stuff running in the background, all the stuff all of, they usually do. All of, all of the tools and, uh, and capabilities of Windows are in this, because again, it's Windows. So I've installed nice. it. And then it's the a real app, you can do everything with it. Yep. Here. It's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, how the performance is with all kinds of apps. Hopefully later you'll be showing more and more apps. Oh, definitely. Yeah, as, as we get closer to commercialization with our partners, there's definitely going to be a lot more, a lot more uh, getting out in the wild about different, different testing and, and playing around. Actually, several months ago, Microsoft even showed uh, Photoshop. Yep. It yep. was a full Photoshop, mm -hmm. real Photoshop, and they yep. were in the video saying, look, it's full speed. Yeah, well, they were doing. They were doing. A, they applied, I think, a radial blur to to a photo. Now, this is not the type of device that you're going to want to be your production photographer device, right? This is this is if you if you're out in the field and you're taking some photos and you want to edit them before you send them somewhere, you can do that. But uh, but but it's it's really we're focusing on that the web browsing, the productivity, the video streaming. Those are the things that most people do most of the time with their devices. Those are going to be amazing experiences. Everything else is going to be entirely entirely possible and usable and doable. Hopefully, yeah. Even, well, I'm hoping even something like a video editing. Yeah, well, we'll Hopefully. see. We'll see. I have not tested video editing yet. We'll see. And some basic photo editing. I just do a few things in GIMP. You know, GIMP would be nice. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting. Later, yep. I mean, soon enough, people are going to be able to maybe even run benchmarks and see how you perform or... Well, I mean, definitely. Uh, there's no stopping people from running benchmarks. The, uh, the, uh, the thing that we want people to focus on, though, is really the experience. So when you run your applications, does it work well? Does it, does it do exactly what you need it to do? Is the performance good? That's what we want people to focus on. Like you saw, I was running Excel. Everything's working perfectly, regardless of the fact that it's running through emulation. Yeah, you could run a benchmark and say, well, through emulation, it's not working as well. But you don't see that. You, what you experience is, is a great running app. So right now, there's Edge browser. This is an ARM-optimized Edge browser, right? Uh, this case, let's, let's actually yeah. see here. Is this running uh, Win32? So Edge, Edge is actually uh, emulation as well. Ah, it's also emulation, even the, the browser. Yeah. So, uh, for example, if you would have Chrome and you, you did install Chrome on this one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then it's uh, X, uh, X32, is it X86? Yeah, yeah it would be for X, now. X86. Yeah. But who knows? They could be optimizing they, they this. Could, they could do a universal app, yeah. Because they have uh, ARM Chromebooks, so I guess they already have some software that could like just port over or something. I'm sure. I'm Hopefully. sure. I mean, yeah. the, the the once these devices start getting out there, the whole ecosystem is start going to start, you know, optimizing their own their own uh, applications for it. I can imagine that maybe you'd have some stats. What's most in demand? What people are doing, and try to encourage the developers to optimize those a little bit to the ARM, so you don't have to emulate forever. Maybe some of them eventually come over to Universal. That's what Microsoft yeah. wants. Well, yeah, definitely. They want yeah. they want their they want their ecosystem to be optimized for for a perfect experience on every platform. So they're going to be pushing more and more developers or working with more and more developers to get them onto those Universal apps. Can we see a YouTube video? Yeah. Because uh, for example, if, even if this is the x86 browser and you're running YouTube video without a, without hitch, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it just shows that uh, all the all the stuff that goes on in there, there's a lot of hardware acceleration in the browser, a huge amount, and still you're able to run it. Mm -hmm. You can do video, you can do all the HTML5 stuff in the browser. And this is also showing a little bit of that gigabit LTE side of things as well. So this is streaming 1080p. You can see how quickly when I click around in here, we can reload. Now this is actually bottlenecked at 100 megabits per second because of, uh, because of our internet connection here. But if I go into, let's say I want to download the movie instead of streaming it, I can go to our local area network where we'll actually see the, uh, the full speed of a, of a uh, gigabit LTE connection. This is local? Yeah, this is, this is local server, but I'm through our gigabit yeah. LTE connection. Just because right now gigabit LTE is not deployed, 
So we can get that end-to-end -end gigabit LTE. 45 megabyte per megabyte. second. So yeah, so we're seeing here is high 300 megabits per second. This is a good number for us to be able to show because it's not that theoretical maximum of that 972 megabits per second or something that we get. It's actual numbers that someone might actually see while doing a download on gigabit LTE network. This could be the, the biggest deal for the whole uh, ISP telecom industry to get on board with this and get uh, large display productivity on their LTE networks. So yeah, that's I mean, it. That's getting, a... getting more devices, doing more content. It depends on each carrier's business model on, on why exactly they're incentivized to do it. Sometimes it's just adding more devices and more data and that gets them more revenue. Other times it's a loyalty play. The more devices that you get on there, the less likely you are to change to a different carrier or something. So there are many reasons for it, but yes, carriers are quite excited about it. The carrier well. should basically say, hey, which phone do you want? You you pick an 835 high-end phone, which laptop you want, you can pick Asus, HP, Lenovo, sign a contract two years, you get both of them subsidized. That's up to them. I think that would be a great business model. <laughs> I, that, that, you would be selling millions of these. If you, and and, and this, this built-in LTE is a big, big deal that actually for the consumer, well, it's, that's the speed. It's, it's a, I mean, gigabit LTE is a big deal on whether you're talking about cellular or mobile PC. For the mobile PC, though, we, we think it's a it's a particularly uh, big uh, big uh, shift in in how you approach these devices, because it's not just well, do I have this in local storage or is my computer ba capable of doing this? Instead, you've got a really fast connection to the cloud, and the cloud can then become what you're capable of. So if it's stored out in the cloud, I can it doesn't really matter whether I have it here or there. I can get it here as soon as I need it. And it doesn't really matter if I'm capable of doing this here. If there's a capability out in the cloud, I can take full advantage of it from anywhere at incredible data speeds. So it could include a whole bunch of like terabyte on one drive. I think they should do that. Like include a whole bunch of cloud storage. Have fun on, on Google Drive as much as you want. It just feels like local. Yeah, if that's, all your that's, files that's are right the there. idea. And, even, and as we go further over the coming years and get into 5G, it'll be even, even more like that. That's where they talk about maybe local storage will become a thing of the past. I mean, we'll see, we'll see how it all goes, but those are definite possibilities. But of course, it also has huge Wi-Fi speed, right? It's the yeah, fast Wi-Fi. No, extreme, it has, it has... Uh, it's not AD? 8, 835 actually has AD built in. It I, ultimately could be AD. Could be AD, depending on the design that That's our, that our customers That's gigabit Wi-Fi. That's multi-gigabit Wi-Fi. Multi-gigabit Wi-Fi. Right. Because AC can do over a gigabit. But, uh, but yeah, AD is, is multi-gigabit. That's where you're getting like you know, four gigabits per second of... of, of like many of the ISPs, they actually recommend you, uh, they want you to roam. So you, they want all their customers to have a second SSID at home. So you can easily auto-connect on the on a million Wi-Fi hotspots in each country. You know, like they want to promote that. that. That would be a way to use it easily. You just walk around. You might go on Wi-Fi, not be an LTE all the time. And still yeah, have no. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of different different approaches to to how they manage the networks. Whether you're going through an internet backhaul or the cellular backhaul, but uh, I mean ultimately we want to support everything. Amazon should also uh, they have unlimited storage with Amazon Drive, which is pretty awesome. And uh, so this is a 10 nanometer chip. I don't yep. think Intel does any 10 nanometers yet, no, right? Nothing 10 nanometers. Not, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So that gives you an advantage too. And this is eight core, big little. Yeah, eight core big little. You can see yeah. here we we're showing that, and this is actually something else important because big little is something new to, new to the Windows side of things, and so this is a new level of efficiency in the processing for for a Windows machine, and when you compare this to an x86, I mean you can see I've I've parked some of my big cores as I've scaled down my activity. This four big and four small. Yeah, four. four these are the four little right here, and then the four big right here. And this number right here, we haven't released exactly what our peak uh, CPU speed is going to be, but uh, but this is this is talking about the peak speed of core zero, which is one of our little cores. It's not a smartphone, it's a bigger device. You could be cranking up the gigahertz, but then maybe without it being an issue. No, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be announcing the speed. More careful, there, are right? definitely, there, are, there are definitely fewer thermal constraints on, on these larger devices, so that's definitely a possibility. We're going to get everything we can out of it, and we'll, we'll be announcing the speed uh, at some point in the future as well. Nice. So this is the, basically, it is the fastest ARM processor in the world, right? You're pretty proud to maybe, I'm, I'm just guessing. I but it's know. a 10 nanometer <laughs> octa-core, uh, it's one of the fastest in the world. It's, it's an extremely, extremely advanced processor. And, and we expect this to be a big advantage in Windows, also not just because of what you're seeing here, but actually when you go into, say, uh, standby, we'll have what you would call connected standby, where you can be syncing your data, you can have Cortana active, and you can be getting uh, 
giving voice commands and waking up the device. You get that instant on capability that you have on a phone, but, uh, but this is all while consuming far less power than what you would see on an x86 processor in regular standby. When all it's doing is maintaining state of apps, we're still, we expect to see four to five times less power consumption in ours in standby while doing all of that background processing on these devices. So it's, that's a new thing for Windows as well. I'd like to have all three of the assistants. You can just call each of them what you want. You say, hey, okay, Google or hello, Echo, and uh, the other, hi, uh, Cortana. And then you just, it wakes up, the screen just, uh, or they could be LED light, they could be a second display. On, they, they have all these options. <laughs> you can have a little display on the back with like showing how many emails you've got, like you need to get back to work, you know, uh, something that you've never seen in a laptop before. Uh, if they want. Okay, yeah, I'm just uh, I see. We'll see what they do. That's we'll right. see. We're going to enable everything. Nice, and this uh, this this big little is uh, is a uh, it's very interesting to see how it gets super optimized in, in Windows 10, mm -hmm. because actually I would guess most people even when they have a huge Intel device, they rarely use like 10% of the performance oh, sure. that's there. Sure, they yeah. just have lots of no, wasted, we see. I mean, if you if you, if you look at if you look at the uh, the CPU usage, really you use the most cores at the highest peaks when you're loading an app or when you're booting up. And then when you're actually using it, it's actually quite, uh, quite variable. We say it's, it's like bursty, it's like network traffic. It goes up and then it goes down. But most of the time, you know, see situations like this. I'll, let's say I'm browsing to a web page. I browse to the page, things spike up. And then while I'm reading the page, it goes down. And then it spikes up when I load a different app and then it goes down while I actually use it. That's what you typically see. So being able to scale uh, like we can with the big little is a big advantage for efficiency. I would think even a video editor most of the time doesn't you, but it just when you need to render something, it yeah. goes through a big peak. Yeah. And hopefully you get to optimize all the peaks people want. Like if they want some specific peaks, maybe you can re -up. Maybe the emulator will be perfect on day one, or maybe you keep optimizing it, keep yeah. improving it. Always, there will always be continuous improvement and optimization. Uh, that's, that's just the nature of the industry. It will definitely be supporting that.